Hey everyone, my name is Tegan and welcome back to Tandy Rides. Today I'm going to be doing the bookish little back tag, which I feel like I've done before, but it might have been on my old channel, so we're going to do it again. This is a version I'm taking off of Paper Fury's blog, which I believe was adapted from a like monthly Instagram challenge from Book Junkie. So I will leave links to whatever I can find in the description and let's begin. So question one is series or standalone? And I feel like some of my favourite all-time books are standalone, so I would go with that. But I feel like if... I'm guessing this is a question where you can only have one of them for like the rest of your life. So if I was left with series for the rest of my life, that's more books. And I can just ignore the rest of the series and tend to first on the standalone. Because like if I have a standalone and I suddenly want more, then I can't have more. You see? So like, even if it's like Sandra Clare books, if... She didn't even have any standalones, does she? But at least with series, then I have like hundreds and hundreds of books all in this one world, so I can have more anytime I want. So I'm gonna go with sta not standalone. I'm gonna go with series. So question two is magic earned or magic born. I think I prefer in this sense magic earned because I feel like it's a more interesting character arc or someone who starts off non-magical and becomes magical, rather than the whole like chosen one trope, which isn't really something I'm a huge fan of. So if I go with magic and that one's closer that was 58 percent of people voted for magic earned and 41 percent voted for magic born but like there are some like chosen one characters that i really adore but there's some like um girl from the grease trilogy the sun summoner one she's one i'm not a huge fan of even though she is a chosen one I guess she's had magic her entire life but only like recently discovered how to use it and I'm not a huge fan of her so she's like just one example of a magic born person I'm not a fan of but there's, there's a lot I do like so question three is enemies to lovers or friends to lovers I feel like in a logical sense like the friends to lovers thing it's more of a relationship that is more likely to last but enemies to lovers, it's usually snarky and angsty and like a lot more banter and I love that. So enemies to lovers, which that's 60% for enemies to lovers and 40% for friends to lovers. And also I feel like that's, actually no that's a lie, I feel like I'm more the person to write friends to lovers because I love friendship. But enemies to lovers is something I love reading so much more. Question 4 is hilarious banter or emotional ruin? And I'm going to straight up say that my favourite books of all time are all the ones that managed to like stab me straight in the feels, like every single page. But there are some books that I love that are more banterous, but they still have emotional ruin in. So I think emotional ruin is the logical way to go, judging by that. That one is interesting. That one had 36% of people for emotional ruin, so a lot less this time and 63% wanted hilarious banter. But I love emotional ruin, but I love the banter so much. Cause they're like, like the emotional ruin ones are the ones that make like me like angst a little. And that's what I need in my life. And also I love writing like emotional ruin a lot more cause I'm not great at banter. And I like breaking people's hearts. That sounds bad. <laughs> Question five is love triangle or insta love? And I'm not gonna lie, I kinda hate them both. But I think I hate insta love a little bit more because that comes out of nowhere. At least with a love triangle, you can have properly developed characters and relationships. But insta love is just, here's a character. Here's someone else who's literally just been introduced and has like no background or development whatsoever. And there's suddenly a romance or a spark. It's like, where does that come from? So we're gonna go with love triangle. I would probably, mm, yeah, I would probably die for a love triangle. Like, like there's some that are so well written and like beautiful, but I can't think of a single insta love story that I like, honestly. That one's a lot more. That was 75% love triangle and 20... I can't count. 25% insta love. And although I don't like love triangles at all, there are some that really get me. Uh, but they're the exception. <laughs> Question six is keyboard smash fantasy names or all names start with the same letter. So when I get a book called the keyboard smash fantasy names, I don't even read 
the name, it just makes like a sound in my head that's not actually a name. But all names that start with the same letter is just unacceptable because I don't read the whole word half the time. So when I see loads of letters, like loads of names that just start with like both all the names start with A or all the names start with like S or something, like I don't know who's who. But at least with keyboard smash fancy names, they're all different and although their name isn't a name in my head, it's just a sound, I get some idea of who's who. You get me? Let's vote. Vote. Okay, that was a 72% for fancy names and a 70... not a 70... 72% fancy names and a 28% for all names start with the same letter. Also, I have a slight issue where the entire cast has, like, very normal names. Like, can I think of an example? What's this called? Lady Midnight. You've had people called Emma and Mark and Malcolm and Christina, and they're all very normal names. But then you have Magnus, and you have Tiberius, and you have Octav... is he called Octavian? Octavius. But yeah, I like books that have a balance between normal names and I like a book that and a balance of fancy names. But I do prefer the whole fancy name thing over um generic everyone name. That was just a really pointless contribution to this question, but that's how I feel. I like balance between weird and normal. <laughs> question seven is mean parents or dead parents? And I've written both, I guess. In Beauty and the Breakdown the parents are mentioned but they're like the mean parents. In the book I'm writing now, Paper Forests, they're not in the story at all, so they might as well be like dead parents. But there are a lot of books with actual dead parents. But usually in YA books especially, the parents are a great source of tension and add to the angst, like especially the mean parent thing. But also it's good if they're out of the way so your characters can have like a little adventure. But I think in a way I prefer what do I prefer? I think I prefer writing mean parents, but I prefer reading dead parents. So I'm going to go with mean parents for this question, just because there's, there's extra character there, so there's extra development as well, and more angst, because we all love angst. That was 72% uh, of people prefer dead parents, and 28 prefer mean parents. But even if you think of all the, like Disney stories, they all have like wicked stepmothers and things like that, and that makes the story so much more interesting than just like if they're dead. Like if Cinderella didn't have the wicked stepmother and she just had like her dead mum, that would have been so boring. <laughs> Question eight is supermodel looks or constantly says how plain they are, and this is just like a this or that tag with all the tropes that I don't like because. I hate it in books when characters are like, oh, I'm so boring, I've got brown eyes, brown hair, it's like, that, why is that boring? Like, brown eyes is my favourite eye colour of some person, and everyone's like, oh, it's so boring. And I feel like it's just pages and pages of someone whining that, like, they're unattractive or plain or boring. And then it becomes more centred around, their arc usually becomes about someone saying they're beautiful, rather than some actual plot. Like, I can't even think of a book title right now because my mind's gone blank. But it's usually a lot of books where the girl is boring and she's not interesting until she suddenly gets a boyfriend who makes her feel exciting and there's that. I don't like that. So in this case I'm more tempted to lean towards supermodel looks because then you just get everyone seeing how hot they are rather than just like whining and complaining. Yeah. Question 9 is face on cover versus typography on cover, and this is mean because in my heart like my answer is both. But if I'm thinking about all my favourite books, they're usually more typography ones and faces, mainly because I like to imagine how the character looks myself. But if you're looking at like my own book cover, I guess even though it's not a face, it's got people on, which are basically people with my character's most basic like appearance traits which is just brown hair or blonde hair but yeah if you're looking at like all the books I really love and the covers I really love especially it's usually more typography because they're like the shiny pretty ones and yeah I like to imagine what the faces look like myself so typography on cover that one 
is our like clearest answer yet. That was 8% for face on cover and 92% for typography. And the final question, question 10. Villain turning a little good or hero turning a little bad? This one, I'm torn. Basically, if there's any book that has remotely one of these ideas in, I'm, I'm for it. Like, if you think of Six of Crows, you have Kaz, who's kind of the villain guy. He's not even a proper villain, but he's like the heartless, cold, slightly evil guy, who turns out to have a soft side. And going back to Lady Midnight, you have Julian, who's like the perfect, pure hero for the entire thing. And then suddenly he has a dark side, and I'm conflicted. I'm going to dwell on this for a second, be right back. So I think I love this trope just because how much it complicates everything and it has like the good explanation, a good exploration of like what good and evil are. And I really love morally grey characters. But I think for this, because I usually prefer the villains over the heroes, I'm gonna go with villains turn out to be a little good. So vote. That was fifty eight percent of villains turning good and forty two percent for heroes turning bad. So that's all the questions we have time for today. In the comments below, let me know if you prefer a villain turning a little good or a hero turning a little bad. And that's everything. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you next time. Bye!